All right, Mike and Jeff with that's good enough for me.com. We're doing our who's zooming who season two finale and holiday special. We were previously joined with Zach and Brian from band aid brigade uh, until they passed out because we we're fucking losers. It's true. Oh shit. This is happening still. Hey, 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 guys doing? sleepyhead, wake up. Oh. <laughs> Zach's doing that thing where he's sleeping with his eyes open, but actually just truly passed out. With his eyes <laughs> My open. daughter used to do that and it freaked the hell out of me. I told you not to lay down. It's, no, it's like this. It's like this. It's like, uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Ace have a meth head <laughs> all the time. Uh, well, thank you for joining us for our elaborate holiday themed. Yeah. Uh, season yeah, this nine. is cool. This is cool. I'm excited about this because I finally figured out how to set up my phone so I can just be in bed like this. I'm li- really stoked. I don't have to awesome. hold the thing. I got my headphones in. I can hear everybody. This is great. So we're going to start this off, Zach. You were actually the first... Uh, zoom interview that i ever did uh i interviewed oh. you with Jarrett, and I, I i wanted to play a little sound clip from it from our, sure. our pilot episode was pairs because <laughs> i i have to get this off my chest why do you why do you think that band brigade called the record i'm separate <laughs> i i haven't i haven't read about this what is this nothing it's nothing <laughs> 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 you, know, uh, you know it's nothing don't worry about it <laughs> in, in right. respect, <laughs> you didn't even try you're just all, so what the fuck are you talking about you actually had more enthusiasm when i asked you what kind of pizza you're eating right after that but uh <laughs> but you know i gotta say now uh as as now a listener and a fan of, of the band-aid brigade uh that that was a very clever little little uh, point that you had in March. Yeah, what yeah. was the reference thing is the question. The, the, COVID? The I'm yeah. separate thing, yeah. The, yeah. Like we, we knew it was coming. Good prediction. In fact, it well, I, it's not I mean, it can it really be called a prediction if you invented the virus yourself? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is a scoop right here, man. <laughs> this is yeah, look. <laughs> New 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 band brigade Zoom interview drops on QAnon in twelve hours. <laughs> I knew it. So I, I've tried not to. Uh, I've, I've tried not to fall into it, but I, I I catch myself watching two or three. There's this uh, YouTube series called Karens in the Wild where they just catch like. <laughs> Bro, it's men I watch them all the time. All the time. Yeah, all the time. I watch. <laughs> there just becomes there becomes points where I'm like trembling with rage about how stupid yeah. human beings are and i have to just turn yeah, yeah. Off. but but to get uh, you know to get back do you know do you know that uh if if you don't let me come in your store without a mask on you're discriminating against me you know this is you know you're breaking the law right now i love that yeah no, as, a, as, <laughs> as, a, as a straight white human i I've, I've really enjoyed watching other straight white humans be like <laughs> minority now <laughs> this is awesome <laughs> so excited to have anybody tell them no for the first time yeah. like what so uh back back to the album uh i'm separate is fantastic it's a really good record i wanted to tell both of you that uh delving into that was kind of neat because obviously Zach, I recognized your vocals. So it, it kind of reminded me of the first time I listened to Bad Astronaut. You know, it was like, oh, I recognize right. that voice, but these guys are playing whatever the, whatever the fuck kind of music they want to play. And that's what I think makes the album really good. It's just the variety of sounds. I still don't know how to describe your sound. Uh, uh, w- yeah, what, what did we uh, settle on, Brian? Was it uh, like yacht punk? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's something. Back wind. No, it was like yacht. Uh, fuck, I can't remember. Mambet came up with a really funny one. Something that yacht had to do with though. Kind of. Yeah. Really, that was just for the. Uh, that was just for the uh, travel. Uh, travel light. Because really, yeah, right. I don't know if they're, the rest of it, but I don't know. It's hard to describe. It's just what well, we were cool. doing that time. <laughs> we're just we we yeah. we're just j- basically we're just a famous pop rock band. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, I couldn't go without mentioning that uh, 
the the man Chris Fogel. Uh, they, did he produce that record? Yes, yes, he did. That was the beginning of a uh, three record streak I've done with him. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. It is. His, it is his goddamn birthday today. It's November twenty fifth. Yeah. Oh whoa! What do you guys have to say to him? I I um liked someone else's post wishing him happy birthday. So to me, I think that he'll get the message for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, he, he understands. He knows. Um, I mean, we're both just really, really busy. Like I'm really excited to hear that it's his birthday and everything, but I've got other things I need to do. I've been making it a point for some of my better <laughs> friends to, to hop on at like 1202 the day, like midnight after their birthday and be like uh-huh. first late birthday wish. I, I, uh, I uh, called. have you ever listened to, I called my sister last night and wished her happy birthday, and her birthday was on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> what I usually do is like what an I, irresponsible one. I, I, I often tend to miss people's birthdays in my family, and I kind of get out of it by just having my daughter sing a quick happy birthday song to them, and then I uh-huh. the video and this in the video, and it kind of like they're like, oh, I can't be angry anymore, even though it's two or three days late, you know? Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's good solution. But I just I what know. I do, what I do is I wish somebody a happy birthday every other year. So like I'll I, I'll miss it this year with Chris, for example, but next year I'm going to be the first person to tell him, and he'll be like, oh, okay, so. All right. Yeah. You can okay. out on how to <laughs> you have a whole calendar. I, yeah. A twenty four month calendar. There you go. Uh, have, have, I, have have you guys both listened to Chris's band in the gamuts? Of course. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, like, that was like, uh, I mean, you know, we had actually, Pears had actually talked about doing some sort of like live session thing before Band Aid Brigade ever recorded there. But that was one of the reasons that we were like, oh, cool, Chris from the Gamuts. It was before, like, we, I, you know, I was tight with Chris or like, you know, um, before, uh, before uh, we went and did the Band Aid Brigade record and stuff. But yeah, I mean, yeah, what a great band. Shit. Yeah. Yeah, they're fantastic. He's his guitar playing is just next fucking level. Yeah, uh, and it's kind of stemming from me not knowing anything about any current uh, punk rock bands and learning about them throughout the course of the last year of Zoom meetings. Uh, I kind of picked up after really listening to uh, Western Addiction or Bad Cop or Pears or Bandy Brigade, uh, just kind of realizing that a lot of the bigger groups now are uh, comprised of people that have been doing it for 20, 30 years in other bands and then kind of joining together and making these super groups. Right. And, uh, I kind of wanted to elaborate on that a little bit, both with Band-Aid Brigade and Pairs, because there's a lot of experience uh, across the board there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you know, um, th- I, that... Band Aid Brigade could be called a super group is I think a little bit of an uh, uh, exaggeration. <laughs> like oh. we were, we were, a, we were, we are all guys that were in bands before, uh, but I don't know if that necess- necessarily constitutes super group. You know, I, Zach Quinn I, of of a late stage fat band and uh, <laughs> Brian Wallstrom of One Week Records. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm the unknown guy in another super group, so that kind of helps a little bit. Okay, so you or know what? It. Maybe See, we he, are a super group. He's double dipping on the super <laughs> groupage. Yeah. I only join yeah. super group bands. That's the unknown guy. <laughs> I'm the filler. Is that the, uh, torti- is that the tortilla blanket thing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it is so comfortable. <laughs> I was like, I'm never wearing that thing. It looks weird. And then I just can't live without it. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about people draping themselves in a big circle. That's weird. <laughs> I, I don't know. It looks no, comfy. No, no. I'm like, no. oh, do you have any do you have any comments about the Fat Rack 2020 releases uh, uh, that all came out? Uh <laughs> to, to no tours or shows <laughs> yeah what a fucking year jesus i know it's literally like a <clears throat> world shut down what like a week before you guys are supposed to leave zach 
Yeah. <laughs> it's and all the, up. The, the, it's kind of a sick humor about it, but just like all the fighting about touring details and shit just completely oh. erased. Oh my god, I fucking <laughs> you know forgot. I mean? Like we yeah. argued so much about yeah. like tour schedules and then yeah. none of it happened anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, a uh, yeah. It's a waste of time. We were supposed to do a, a US tour um with a dog party, right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And we, the joke was just like three months after the shutdown and like way past when the tour was even supposed to happen. Uh, we just kept going. So do you think this is still happening or? Similar. Yeah. I saw a tweet the other day that said, uh, you know, you guys, I just found out that Donald Trump's presidency's over at the end of the year, and I realized that he only has like six weeks to make America great again. I'm not sure if he's going to have enough to. I'm not sure he's going to pull it off. <laughs> That's kind of I, in the mentality. <laughs> what's so fucking crazy is there are people that are so disconnected from like what is actually happening that they're like, he did it. Check it out, man. This is it. He did it. We need it. We need to keep this guy. Yeah. We need now. Now that it's great, we gotta keep it great again. Yeah. <clears throat> no. So I I grew up in a small town in northeast Nebraska. That's like two and a half hours from anything. And there was a there was a town even shittier, like down the street, like a mile away, that had like a population of fifty people. And there's uh, a kid, and so they had to use our school, and so we you know picked on them and shit because they got to like they got snow days if it rained because they had to travel. And they gave these kids like driver's licenses when they were 12 too. It was this really weird farmers thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a, uh, yeah. there's this fucking like dumbass Gumby looking ginger kid uh, <laughs> that I graduated. I think he graduated with me if he didn't drop out, but he, he's been kind of my like go-to Facebook page when I just want to see just like how wrong you can be about history. Yeah. And, he, and he's like just like hand to his god like trump took the uh, trump won this he was completely robbed it's so fucking crazy and i mean like there people believe that and they still like there's audio recordings of rudy giuliani in the court being like no nah, we're like not actually saying there's voter fraud <laughs> like that, that, that whole that whole thing is like court of public opinion thing but right. like he, 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 without evidence like he can't just stand in a courtroom and just make shit up that's not the way that works yeah. you know uh but so so their whole thing is just like say one thing in front of cameras say another thing in the courtroom and let the people who watch fucking newsmax and uh shit like that uh just OAR. yeah oan Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Here. and 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 and, and like just and they just decide or like, oar decide, oh yes <laughs> um yeah and th they don't care they don't care about what's actually what uh, about reality at all i've said this before it reminds me watching trump supporters reminds me of uh and really the QAnon thing especially it's like uh it's like a bunch of people discovered D and D but like a weird version of D&D &D that applies to the real world, you know? So it's like and all these people are just LARPing right now. Like they don't care that it's not real. Like that's that they're playing the game. This is fun. Dude, I got in the craziest text with the chain with my dad the other night and we've kind of settled our differences, agree to disagree kind of thing because he's super far right, lives in Virginia, mm. a 30 year Navy vet, you know? Um, and it was just, he, he's every time California does something like overreach government, whatever, in his opinion, he'll like make a comment. So the other day, of course, he's all make sure you're in by 10 for the curfew. Oh, by the way, Thanksgiving's canceled. And so I just <laughs> sent back the picture of the Rudy Giuliani with the shit coming down the street. <laughs> and I'm all, Oh no. He said, what are you doing right now? And I'm just all, I'm just still trying to figure out what the fuck this is. And then, and then, and then he writes back and goes, it's hair dye. I'm all, I don't know. It looks like diarrhea or something. And then, no. and then he writes back, no, it was a Democrat hairstylist. They know no boundaries. I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? Yes. And oh so my then, God. It's so, so amazing. I, and then I just write back, 
wait, so it's not doo-doo. And then I'm just, now the only thing I respond to him is duty Giuliani. That's like, the only- <laughs> <laughs> I, I had this thought today. I, I had this thought today though, that we're relatively the same age, right? So we all grew up, uh, and, and understood at some point of our lives that if you double clicked that, uh, like, what the fuck was that band called? The terrible band. It doesn't matter. We'll just say Limp Biscuit. We knew that if we double click oh. Limp Biscuit break stuff dot MP3 dot EXT, we knew we were going to destroy our computers. We right. received uh, emails from Nigerian princes. Like, we all learned in our childhood in internet is full of lies and deception. And I think yeah. that really what we're seeing a lot of is like the generation a little older than us, they never experienced that. Suddenly yes. they have Facebook and they're like, absolutely. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. A Nigerian prince. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like the, the, the fact that QAnon and- <laughs> was bred on like the 4chan forums says mm-hmm. everything you need to know about it. I mean, like I remember when 4chan was new and at that point, like it, what's so funny is 4chan, like, I guess, like spawned this uh, this movement, this like far right Christian, you know, the, the, the Democrats are drinking the blood of babies thing. Well, it all it all started with them trading fucking kitty porn pictures <laughs> yeah. on the same fucking forums like 20 years ago. Yeah. And it's and, and I remember like seeing when when somebody would start posting shit like that, be like, holy shit. This place is like the home of the weirdest, scummiest people <laughs> in the world. And you can find them all organized perfectly on this message board. And I, I don't know. I can't believe now that that is something that like people who are supposed to be like wiser than us, like can't see through that. Yeah. Are, are you kidding me? Yeah. I, I, it blows my fucking mind. It really does. It blows my mind. It's pretty mental. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> Speaking of Limp Biscuit, I was just reading through the messages that we sent uh, Fred Durst from our profile. Uh, <laughs> hey, Fred. Because Fred Durst liked a post of ours that Zach was doing a cover, a Limp Biscuit. No, not a cover, a karaoke. Karaoke. At, at, uh, in Fort Collins at Surfside. And so we ju- I just immediately started trying to like befriend him on direct message and he did not respond to anything. But the first one was, hey, Fred, big fans over here. Would you at all be interested in throwing down a verse on our new record? We track in June in Colorado. We'd be honored. Oh, I guess that was kind of like serious throw a bone thing or something. I don't know. But then the next one was, dear Mr. Durst, I sincerely hope my last correspondence was not offensive. In the event that it was, we'd like to make it up to you by allowing you to be in our next music video, which will take place <laughs> in a neighborhood outside Cabo San Lucas. Thank you for your prompt reply. That's so good. Uh, oh, it's like this, this. And then the last one, though, the last one is, okay, we are officially concerned. Are you okay? Because he just hasn't responded anything. <laughs> and uh, it's like... No, no, Brian. Yeah, just broke actually, down, Br- Brian just broke down like every correspondence I've had trying to book Zoom meetings with punk bands. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, I actually now that I'm thinking about it, I haven't talked to Fred in a long time. I am starting to get worried. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think he's doing all right. He looks pretty normal in his videos lately. Yeah, his, his yeah. Instagram. <laughs> I'm probably just trying to uh, get in touch with him at all the wrong times. Yeah, it's, he's, he's probably locked. asleep. His, yeah. his schedule has probably been rearranged a few times since uh, since I met him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Someone mm-hmm. slashed his plan's ass with a chainsaw. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I read this somewhere uh, that they went on a tour, like kind of a comeback tour, and they played a Rage Against the Machine song uh, every day of the, of the tour. And Fred Durst, started the song by saying like if this band wouldn't have existed then you guys wouldn't be seeing the biscuit right now or whatever uh and so somebody (laughs) tracked down one of the rage against the machine guys uh and told him about this and then it was the bass player and his his response (laughs) was like (laughs) yeah (laughs) just this slumpy shrug (laughs) i'm sorry guys (laughs) You know, sorry. All right. So, uh, no, I mean, 
back to charismatic frontmen, Zach, I wanted to talk to you about when you uh, started Pairs, uh, your opportunity to not have to play an instrument, because I know that you're, you're multi-talented. Uh, what kind of made you, did you make that decision or did somebody else? And how much fun is it to just not have any responsibility on stage? Um, uh, so uh, it, the decision came about because we wrote the first song, and I couldn't play it. <laughs> That's what happened. Yeah, uh, I was yeah. like, okay, Brian can play this. I cannot. He's got the fast right hand. He's got all that stuff I don't have. Uh, so immediately it was just like, okay, so I guess I'm not playing guitar in this band. Cool. So that decision was made. But then like the, 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 the stage show, like, I don't know. At first it seemed like, oh, this is cool. I don't have to fucking worry about any instruments in it, everything. And, but then, I mean, like, the band kind of just progressed. We got better than any band I had been in to that point. Uh, and mm -hmm. I realized that my voice is an instrument. And actually, this is way worse because I can't just bring it to a shop if I don't take care of it right. So that was a really, that was a, <laughs> that was a rough wake up call. Uh, and then the other thing was like uh, uh, the stage show just developed over time. I was really nervous about it at first. And then uh, the anxiety kind of turned into... Mm -hmm just letting the, uh, the panic attack happen. And then it sort of turned stylistically into something from that. Um, yeah, that's strange, but, uh, yeah, I just couldn't, I can't play pair of songs really the way that they're played, you know, actually I can slow mm -hmm. them down and play them all pretty. <laughs> pretty. No, and I, you know, I, I recalled a few moments in my life, like playing in local bands and like throwing the guitar to my buddy to play a song and walking over to the microphone and being like, do I do this while I'm saying like, I don't know. <laughs> that's, do I do that's, ex that's exactly what you do when you, when you do that. Yeah. I think you got to nail down. I, I, you know, I think you, you're like a more impressive, uh, Jello Biafra. More I, impressive some... Jello Biafra. That's fucking those big words. He, yeah. He's buttering you up, man. He's got something he wants from you. Yeah. What, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck yourself, Jeff. This is our holiday special. You're ruining it. <laughs> no, I guess, you know, with there, there are some, there are some clips of Jello in the eighties where it's like it's Jello and East Bay Ray where they're and, and Klaus, they're like fucking hunks, right? And they're like mm -hmm. just commanding the stage. But now every time Jello comes and does like guest vocals on a performance, he's wearing like a fucking safari hat and like <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> he just like he's like, he looks like Jello somebody's Jello. like lost. <laughs> He's like somebody's yeah. lost grandfather, like he jumbled he's on heard. stage. Jello Biopera is just like, just comes out and he's like, he's like waving to everybody and he's wearing a fucking dashiki and he's like, oh, hey. <laughs> no, he's this got is, like, this is normal. This is, this is normal. He's got like, <laughs> he's got like khaki cargo shorts, a khaki cargo shirt, and a khaki cargo hat. <laughs> Dude, okay, wait a minute. That, like the human a khaki oh, cargo shirt? Uh, is like, but like, I'm the way I'm imagining it is just like it looks like a pair of pants, but it's just yeah. you wear it up here. No, the guy from Blues Traveler had one. No, I want like ones pockets. that look like pants. Yeah, two big old like like cargo pockets like right here. <laughs> Dude, we gotta get we gotta get full cargo outfits for Band Brigade at yeah. one point. Yeah. That's a fucking great but, idea. Yeah. Could you, could Jeff, you are, there any, are there you any seamstresses? Huh? <laughs> are, are there any seamstresses in our writing department? I don't uh, know. Yeah. We can you can sort one out. <laughs> yeah, that, this needs to happen. Just go find, go to go to go to Wally World. Uh, get yourself the ugliest pair of cargo pants you can find. Make it a shirt. Send it to me. Hey, I'll wear it every not, fucking day. No <laughs> well, if you're for like a super fat guy, you could just like wear one of the legs. <laughs> yeah oh my god it'd be like a tube top yeah oh god. that's Oof. gross <laughs> oh. well i wanted to talk about your new record but i, I kind of want to talk about fashion a little bit more oh shit uh. <laughs> oh. Oh. don't joke don't joke <laughs> he's on un he's unhung overing himself yeah <laughs> so much for today's plan of keeping it clean yeah well it's the day before Thanksgiving. What's the, the point? Freaking holiday, for God's sake! <laughs> yeah, I started vacation. <laughs> well, these uh, little these little guys only have 
two grams of carbs in them, so or a hundred calories. Like, okay. I don't believe. cares. And so for no, since since lockdown, since, since lockdown in March, I was like, these are going to be fine. I've gained like thirty pounds, dude. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh huh. Can't yeah, stop. You know what? Uh, you I know what happened in like three days. <laughs> It was like, uh, I, I, I like, was like, all right, I'm not going to drink beer. I'm going to drink White Claw. And then I started drinking that, and then I was still gaining weight. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to drink vodka. And then what happened, and that's true, you know, you can drink vodka, and, and, you'll, and, and it's way less, you know, fattening than this other stuff. You put on less. But what all that I ended up doing was vodka was easier to drink a lot of. So now I've just been, like, way more fucked up and still drink mm-hmm. the same amount of calories just in way too much vodka instead of like, yeah. you know, <laughs> so like, I don't know. I, I'm not doing myself any favors. I've, I've, I've had the that bottom problem. line is the bottom line is I'm going to, I'm going to gain a lot of weight. <laughs> I've, I've kind of had that problem my whole life is that like, I can't, I can't do the ratios. So if yeah. like, you give me like a, like a, a mixed drink, that's like half whiskey and half Coke, I'm going to drink it as fast as I drink a beer. <laughs> Right. And so like, yeah. it's just like in like 10 minutes, I'm just like, yep. <laughs> yeah. no. And then I wake up and then I wake up and I don't know if I'm hungover or like in a diabetic coma. And then I find like, and then I find out that I ate an entire block of cheese at like 2 a.m. Right. Right. Which right. is also contributing. Yeah. You know, yeah. a fun game. It's, it's I've never been. Been. Uh, since this whole, you know, since COVID started, uh, was wake up in the morning and you have, and you do COVID or hangover. And so you, you spend the first part of the day, like, do I have a, a, a fucking, do I have SARS or do I have a hangover? Yeah. And my throat really hurts. Taking your temperature. I just pulled out. Was- my throat really hurts. I, 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 yeah, I smoked two packs of cigarettes though. Uh, yeah. So maybe that's what it is. I, uh, I I caught your Instagram live that night that you were talking about. I recall uh, this. Which night? Yes. Yes. <laughs> which <laughs> what night? What night are you talking about? Where I drank way too much vodka? That's every night. Yeah, I think I caught it. <laughs> <laughs> I I like the one, and I I only get to say this because I I got to Zoom with Eric, but. Eric joined you for some Instagram live, uh, live stuff oh, and it looked like so he had funny. lost like it he looked like he had lost crazy. like 50 pounds. It's crazy. Yeah, he, no, he has. He yeah, awesome. I, it's around. I think it's like 50 pounds, uh, maybe more. I was like, that guy looks like the guy from the Paris music video, but he like shrunk in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he is looking slim. It's uh, quite a surprise. He feels good. You know, I mean, He's like, an excellent that's, guy. Oh God! Yeah, he's he's a wonderful dude. I'm, I'm hoping right, that he so, can he can be involved in more of the uh, band neighbor guide stuff in the future. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I, the the few little session videos I was able to find online of you guys performing is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like I really like how the 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 additional members kind of adapt to the to the recording that was made. I, yeah. I wanted to talk to you about that process, not, not only in I'm Separate, but I know that you guys are working on a new one. Uh, is it kind of just you guys and the drummer doing all the work when you when you did the last one? Um, well, the last one, I think, uh, I mean, what I'll say is like Chris Fogel was actually like a basically a band member in the studio. I don't know, Brian, what do you, what do you think? In terms of writing or recording or like, I think in the, the initial kind of writing was just me and Zach not even knowing what it was going to be like we didn't know if it was going to be a rock album or a we actually had ideas of it being like an electronic album only yeah. and um, right yeah we didn't even know if there'd be vocals <laughs> like we were just let's just write music. yeah and then um so we kind of got it up on its feet and then brought it to the studio and then I forget what we were doing we were doing a tour and Paul was drumming and we started playing one of the tunes Oh, we were in a Gods of Mount Olympus tour. Zach was playing. And then Paul started at Soundcheck playing drums to like travel light or something. And then yeah. me and <laughs> Zach and I just looked at each other going, well, we're going to be a rock band now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that's what that is. And so then, yeah, but in the studio, Chris was pretty much there every day. And Paul, um, yeah, he, he contributed a couple massive 
huge ideas, including Break the Grid. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, we call, kind of all did, did it at that point. Yeah, Dan, well, after the preliminary writing stuff between me and Brian, it was kind of like everybody started to sit down and like kind of turn it into like a complete piece together. You know, it was, it was very, very much collaborative, like yeah. absolute collaboration. Cool. Did Fogel play any guitar solos on it? Anytime the guitar solo is really good, that's Fogel. <laughs> <laughs> no, everything is you, except the very last part. Yeah, right. <laughs> when the really good one starts. Yeah. <laughs> I, can well, play a guitar, I, can, I can play a guitar melody. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny on that tour. The, the, I mean, there was, there was one guitar solo on it. Good, sorry. Did I lose you? Jeff, what's up with your balls? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he kicked it or something. <laughs> like, yeah, Jeff, uh, what is no, up with your balls? I, I, I was just going to say that there was... Sticulitis. <laughs> oh, yeah, bummer. <laughs> yeah, I've had that. <laughs> uh, there was one... There, there was one solo on the record in particular that is a, like a longtime Gamets fan. I listened to it. Uh, it wasn't the first time I had heard it either. It's like maybe Chris played this. Yeah, I can't right. What the no. song is, but it just kind of seemed like his style. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. He played. Uh, he played some. Uh, uh like a, a bunch of leads on the on the album. I can't remember if he played any rhythm. I don't think he did play any rhythm, but uh, he played a bunch of leads. Cool. All right. So now I wanted to talk about. I know you guys are working on a new record. Yeah. Have. Uh, a producer for that record as well. Are, are you doing this one in Denver as well? Uh, no, uh, I don't think so. Uh, really, I mean, like none of the plans are set in stone yet, but we do know that uh, the album is going to be produced by George Soros. Um, and we're, uh, we're really <laughs> he's excited. He's funding about the record too. Um, he's producing it musically, but he's funding it also. Yes. So. I think I read that on QAnon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, so no, we're not recording in Denver. <laughs> Trying to think of fun. But... <laughs> so I, I, I was. But, uh, I was I don't yeah, know. let's let's open up a little bit about this. We're we're going to be recording the new record at the UN headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> not a bad idea. <laughs> Just get a rent a room there somehow. <laughs> Just to have a spot that's weird. Uh -huh. uh, no, it's been mostly remote so far. I mean, shit, I'm actually surprised given our lack of uh we've always well at least in my opinion we've always been one of those bands that like it's kind of have an on off button when it, musically if we're together it's on and not it's not you know so it's uh but we've been able to ship back and forth um the songs to get them really actually a lot of them are pretty far along way further than i thought they'd be at this point for sure yeah yeah um and I, I don't know if either of us have said yet uh, or any of us have said yet who actually is producing the record, but, uh, but uh, Frank Turner is producing a record. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's been really fun, like uh, working with uh, just, uh, uh, you just have like a, a new bandmate to, to, to bounce ideas off of and stuff, you know? So that's really cool. Um, yeah. yeah we're, we aren't really super, protective of of it being like just it's me and brian's thing you know like mm -hmm. it's it's kind of like a good idea is a good idea and uh yeah putting together just a good team to work on a record and build something is really important uh it's you know chris is uh, uh, uh like fucking home run every time i work with him and i'm really excited to work with frank you know uh the stuff the work he's done on uh demos so far the ideas he's had have been fucking wonderful yeah right. awesome and he's very fast. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like he like comes back with shit like a couple days later. <laughs> That's nice. That's always good. That's exciting. That's cool. cool. Yeah. How did how, how did that all come together? Well, uh, me uh, me and Frank met at uh, a Clinton Foundation um, uh, get together. Uh, Hillary they're, they're Clinton actually introduced. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were, we were, we actually like, he ran out of baby blood and he was like, can I have some of your baby blood? And I was like, sure, man, of course, you know, uh, fucking power to the people, you know, communism, have some, 
Yeah. And, uh, and, and, you know, we kind of just hit it off from there. Actually, no. How did this happen, Brian? <laughs> um, it happened. Our, our good buddy. Well, actually, yeah. So our good, our good friend Casey, who's now working with us, um, on kind of like more responsible things, manager type things. Uh, he's good friends with them. And so he sent them the record and I actually, uh, sent him the record too, when it, I think before it came out, kind of when we got it mastered, um, you know, cause we had chats every once in a while on Facebook or whatever. And, uh, I was like, Hey, let me know what you think of this. We just did this album. And he got back to me like the next day is so I love it, you know? And that was way like last year. And then Casey sent it to him and he was into it. And he like, you know, I guess, you know, it was like, let's, I got a lot of downtime right now because he's supposed to be doing stuff and that all got canceled. Yeah. So he's like, now's the time let's do this. Right. And so, I'm like, okay, what the fuck does that mean? Do we, you know? And so then we just, I got on a flight and uh, started, you know, tracking the songs with Zach and demoing those and um, sent him the stem. And he's already kind of like doing stuff with it. So it's been. Uh, funny thing about uh, getting the recordings to Frank, uh, Brian had been telling me to, uh, to send them over. Uh, and in, in true m me fashion, uh, days go by. I don't do it. Uh, and then one text, uh, I get a text from Brian one morning and he's like, so this is, hey. set the, you got to set it up. Like I had gone to new Orleans <laughs> to record yes. for like a whole weekend, flew home. And then Frank writes, Oh, so can you send the stems like the individual tracks, not just the song? Right. So, sure. Zach, you're on that. Right. And so then <laughs> D days go by. And then one morning, Brian texts me just, Hey Zach, why am I across the street? And I look out my window and he's just standing across the street. <laughs> <laughs> and look, and he fucking walks into the house. Uh, and then the fucking, and then FedEx pulls up <laughs> and fed, and and he knowing that he was going to be at my house, he overnighted me a package and the package was just a piece of paper that said, hey, Zach, can you send Frank the songs? Thank you. I actually sent that before I knew I was flying. <gasps> really? OK. Yeah. All right. Because <laughs> I decided to fly out the day. Actually, that I wait, hold hold on. Just I want to get that paper. <laughs> <laughs> that's like rom-com kind of like coordination Dude, it, right it, there, it you know? felt like that i'm like jesus <laughs> i mean there's even a layover in this thing but the way that all happened is that um my roommate eric is very involved like at least emotionally he knows what's going on with everything and he's knows zach really well <laughs> and so he was like dude i cannot watch you wig out any longer about this he's all just get on a flight right now bro and so he he uh he just bought my ticket and so I went out wow. there. and uh yeah so I sent this before <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking uh, fucking <laughs> fucking what's it what's it called like uh uh like what's the uh like it, it's important what's that shipping called like uh, priority he like priority, like priority yeah. shipped it <laughs> just one piece of paper <laughs> in in a fucking FedEx thing <laughs> pretty good <Yeah>. oh. <laughs> No, and then keep, the, the, why am I across the street? <laughs> yeah, good, good. The, no, why, why am I across the street? Kind of brings me to uh, that it, it brings me to the travel light music video at the end when you're uh, out the window with your binoculars ah, watching nah. yourself. Why was I across the street? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, that was such like a. Uh, stroke of luck thing it was because like brian was friendly with a uh, uh, a barista the, uh, that worked at the coffee shop underneath that apartment and she lived above, in the apartment up there and so one day we were like just like yo can we can we just come and film something because they lived across the street from one another. it was fucking perfect <laughs> yeah lucked out nice yeah nice that that entire video is is fantastic. Just the uh, your your character of the spin class chugging the fucking butt heavies is so funny. Yeah. It's it's so it's I sh I like my sister is a fan of like that kind of eighties ish style music, so I uh -huh. sent that to her. She my older sister and like I sent it to her and she was just like, "This is fabulous." And to get her Fuck to like yes. anything I listen to is just like 
surprising. So, it was, but the, the video was just awesome. The songs off and the album is just a treat to listen to. And, and that was that video. That was the heaviest I've ever been. And watching that video now, it's like, it couldn't have been more perfect. Like, it's almost like I method acted, like, gained weight for that fucking video. Like, it's Christian straight Bale, up. Like, punk rock. Yeah, it couldn't have been more perfect. Just the, like, slightly out of shape looking, like, fucking too much weight on this, like, tiny guy. Oh, the God. Out, the like, outtakes from that are still, like, my favorite. Like, all oh. those scenes where you're just yelling at the, like, the poor woman. Like, all yeah. the people in that, that video were basically, like, people literally in my spin class that I used to take. And so, <laughs> I'm all, one day after the class, I'm like, hey, does everyone want to meet here on a weekend and be in our music video? And everyone's like, yeah, totally. And <laughs> I had no idea what was. Yeah, like I didn't tell him anything. I'm just like, I'll bring beer for everybody. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and I, I li- like, it's kind of like the biggest, the biggest bummer about that music video is that it had to be a music video because the, the audio uh, during my classes. Oh my God. Uh, like that shit. Like I'm actually just screaming at those people, like full <laughs> on, like fucking screaming at them. That was so uh, fun, man. Uh, apolog- I, apologies if I don't know this, but did, did, have you released those outtakes? Are they available for people to see? We, we've done them like bits and pieces. I've posted like uh, way back in our Instagram history, but I, right, I, right, right. Okay. We used one to promote the album. I'll, I'll do that. I'll hunt through all those and just find some funny shit. Yeah, it would yeah. be great. That is some, that's some golden stuff. Well, I had, I had done a Zoom with you and Jarrett, Zach, and then uh, I think I talked to you another time to challenge Brian to do a Zoom. And then, yeah, so I, I listened to Band-Aid Brigade, and I, I remember uh, I was stoked that I, I, I was going to be able to interview you, Brian. And I was like, I told my wife, because she doesn't really listen to like heavy punk music. She likes more like pop punky stuff. And I was like, hey, you'll, you'll actually like this music. This is actually, you know, this isn't like, and I put the video on and she just watched you on the spin bike. She's like, that's the guy you've been talking to? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I, was like I promise he's, he's, uh, he's not as mean as he looks in this particular video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Still, I, I always, I think about the spin class, but I always forget about some of the stuff we did, the bar scenes. Uh, yeah. and, and with with your friend who was pretending to be on the worst first date that she's ever been on with me. What was her name? Yeah. Uh, Are you serious? Oh, <laughs> oh shit. Holy shit. <laughs> Danica. She's going to watch this. We're going to send yes. this to her. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that uh, she was like such a good sport and did that so well. I was, you know, I, I don't know. You never really know what somebody's like acting ability is going to be, but like she sold that shit so fucking hard. Oh what man! I mean, third, there was a third place. Oh, the party, the party house. The and party I like house. that. I like that especially. I liked when you suddenly just had a mask on for no reason at all. Yeah. <laughs> and you're playing. Bass. That was all Paul Rucker. He brought like the whole. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the whole costume department from Universal Movies, to, like to the show or to nice. the house. There's a picture on my Instagram from that party where it's me and like a bunch of a bunch of people that were there, and we're all just like smiling and we're holding <laughs> like a mirror just covered in cocaine. <laughs> like fucking, <laughs> I had to like uh, one of those guys was like where he was gonna lose his job, so I had to like put a like black out his face. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why he'd be afraid of that. Yeah. I think he was afraid of losing custody of his kids. No. That might be it. That's yeah, wasn't there it. a baby there? Yes. Yes. No, yes. no you were, you were filming a video. It was it was it was flower. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. It, was right. awesome. exactly. it was it was, it was prop cocaine. Prop. It was prop yeah, cocaine. It was, it was baking soda. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but just to, to clear it up, the baby didn't show up till much later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That, that baby doesn't come out till one a.m. at best. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody let me hold a baby until I was high as a fucking kite. <laughs> <laughs> so it's safe. That's how you know it was safe. Don't worry. I got this because I'm so scared. I'm not gonna got this. Uh, <laughs> Brian, I wanted to talk about one week. Re- one week records. Uh, I just kind of wanted to talk about the origins of it, how it came oh, to see, be. See, y'all, see you guys later. Yep. Later, bro. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you just leave the video going. You just leave yeah. the house. <laughs> you just you can just hear TV in the background, and I'm just like. <laughs> but no, uh, no, Zach, I got that vinyl from you today. I looked at the back cool. of it. There's a picture of you, and you're wearing the same fucking shirt that I put on this. <laughs> and I was like, that's my shirt. <laughs> that's the shirt I'm yeah. wearing right now. <laughs> Why the fuck uh, is he wearing my shirt? That is funny shit. Uh, oh, Origins, One Week Records. Yeah, so week. it was Joey's idea. He had this idea to bring artists to his house. Like, because um, I don't know if he'd already kind of done something similar, like in that time frame, or he would had wanted to do something. But um, we were doing a Scorpio's tour, and he, it was like the first day of the tour, and he were in the band. He's like, what about this idea? just bring people to my house. They stay for a week. We do a record in, in, in a week and whatever that record is, that's what it is. It doesn't matter if it's covers. It doesn't matter what it ends up like. That's the time that we have to make music together. And I was like, that's awesome. And then this guy, Dave McHank, uh, Joey is in our, our friend. He's from San Diego. Joey's been really close for him for a long time. Um, went out to dinner with him like the next night. Cause we played in San Diego, like the next night of the tour. And he's like, you should just call it one week records. <clears throat> and then he made a logo like that day. And then, the, the, then once, once you see the logo, then it's like, all right, this is a thing. And then, you know, Joey's a brilliant artist, very creative guy, not the most organized person when it comes to like managing a business or anything like that. So that's where I kind of came in and we had some help from some friends early on. And then, um, but I, I kind of like took over as like, more on the you know business stuff getting things up and running and um website and whatnot and then it really all changed with uh, our friend peter who joined the label he's kind of like a silent partner uh that is a true like web developer that knows what he's doing and he took over all like the he kind of helped create the membership platform and all that stuff and in the meantime joey was just it was fun. We, we, uh, would go out and like meet songwriters on tour and like Joey would have this cool thing to say, not just, Oh, let me check out your album, you know, or whatever. It was like, Hey, you want to come to my house? <laughs> and yeah. you know, like that's how it got started with Cresswell. That's how it got started with Laura Martin. Um, we met her mm -hmm. in Australia on tour and, and she was just like, Oh my God, I would love to do that. It sounds so fun. It was just really cool early on when we were meeting all these great songwriters and stuff and like even Zach and you know, that was, it was fun back then. And now I don't know, Joey's got a couple more planned, um, but I haven't really talked to him about the new stuff specifically. I thought he's also working on stuff for himself. So it's kind of like he squeezes it in when he's not doing his own music. Um, mm -hmm. yeah but covid would have been a good time to do them if you could do it safely you know you could have done like 21 week records in this amount of time right uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah well that, and th that was something i thought about when uh there was a, a pocket of time that the bands i play in were able to get together and kind of rehearse with masks on and shit and the first thing we did was bought microphones like we we share a ratty practice space with a bunch of other shitty local bands so like it made me kind of laugh that if, you know, if the world ever opens up again, like you're going to show up to the show with your, with your SM58. Like, Oh yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. The, the thought now to, of like I'm going, going to a the music bar venue. with my own glass, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So uh, Paris had I've, one rehearsal since this happened and I totally thought about the microphone thing, got there immediately forgot, mm -hmm. used the fucking ratty, like, <laughs> seven other yes. bands use it microphone yeah. like did the whole practice looked at it yeah. and went shit damn it <laughs> <laughs> there's like a whole new mutation of covid that kills covid on that thing yeah. like so gnarly, yeah. the other way around <laughs> well and there's so many you know i wanted to tell you zach i i know that you had been there i didn't know if brian had but that lookout lounge in omaha that you guys played at uh it closed down. On the, For, wait, it's the it landlord closed down? increased their rent by six hundred percent. Post, the landlord increased their rent by like two hundred percent or something, and they were like, "Okay, then we're fucked. <laughs> like, we can't yeah, do this." Right. And he increased it because of COVID. He was like, oh, "You know, we're all struggling," and so they were like, "Well, then now you can pay for an empty building." Right. Um, yeah. I think 
you know, I think as you guys start to, to be able to play again, uh, the, I don't know. The scenery is going to be very, very different. Uh, yeah, and, and fucking attendance is going to be different. I'm so terrified of even once the tours start happening again, like, I'm so mm-hmm. scared of going on a tour and making dirt because nobody's going out. Um, mm-hmm. I Like, you know, I mean, comparatively speaking, and it's, <laughs> it's not like I was making a lot of money before coronavirus. So, like, if, mm-hmm. that, if that's going to hurt turnout, like, it's still scary to think about. But at the same time, I mean, like, if everybody gets fucking vaccinated and this thing kind of gets to a almost it's behind us type place, you know, um, then we'll see. Uh, but I mean, it's just fuck. It's just nerve wracking a little bit. Yeah. 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 No. And I think that I, I know that you're I know that you two guys are comfortable playing in somebody's basement. And that's something that, uh, you know, a lot of like super cool artists like they're they're too cool to do something like that. I think that that's going to be a thing. I think that it's going to be, you know, these like packed basement shows where it's just like everybody that can fit in it. And that's going to be the thing, because whatever community you used to come to doesn't have a a, a venue anymore, at least yeah, as far right. as all ages. Punk rock or, uh, Outdoor yeah. shows. Outdoor. Yeah. Shows. And that a lot of that backyards. <laughs> Yep. Yep. I, I, it's funny. Cause I kind of, it's like, it's still like, I've seen a lot of streaming concerts over the past, like however many months now, but I remember the, the really the first one I tuned in on you guys was you guys like you, you, and it's like oh. or something to march you at someone's place and you threw on like a, just like, Hey, we're going to film this and put it on Facebook. And I'm like, this is the wave of the future for them. For our <laughs> right. I threw right. on Band-Aid Brigade and it was awesome. You know, it's like, yeah. But, oh, is that the one where, jumped where we were pool. outside and jumped in the pool? That no, was, you're uh, indoors. You're indoors, I think. Oh, 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 oh I, dude, I, it was at Bogles. The okay, yeah, 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 yeah. The, oh, yeah, the yeah. The opening of the reopening of their studio. Yeah. The show, like the actual show. Oh, my God, right. That was Shit. like the weekend that COVID happened. <laughs> Yo, that was like literally like... I was there, uh, I had been there working on a record and I was looking at flights and I was watching the news and I was like, I'm going to go home tomorrow. <laughs> that, and <laughs> bought, bought a ticket to New Orleans for $30 and then that was it. <laughs> like, I remember that show. Oh my God, dude. That, that, you know, I forget what song it is. Oh, Losing Light, where we do the thing where we're just singing a cappella, and we started on that Europe tour literally singing to each other like this close. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and then I realized halfway through that thing, I'm just like, and I can feel your spit going into my mouth. I'm just like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's like well, he's been here for a week. I hope he's fun, dude. Yo, yo, uh, fucking w- w- a moment like that I've had recently. Uh, I was sitting outside on a bench, just minding my own business, drinking beer. I, I had my uh, uh, my little Bluetooth speaker. I have one now. You knew that. Um, But uh, I was out there and I think I told you about this, Brian, a guy, a crackhead comes up. He like talks super fast at me. He's just gotten out of prison, just came from his house, digging up all of his old, uh, his old casino chips. Uh, And he starts just giving me casino chips. And then he sings an entire chorus of Under the Bridge by Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, <laughs> the whole chorus. Like, not just like, oh, that tune. Oh, and he sings this to me because he asked me what I did. And I was like, I'm a musician. And he's like, oh, cool. I don't ever want to feel. <laughs> and like, dude, but the whole chorus and the post chorus. Like, <laughs> I understand like one line, one line's already weird, but whole section. <laughs> and then he, just, he just, <laughs> then he just left. <laughs> like, which is almost just as weird. Like, oh, you use some casino chips. I don't know, I want to feel, see you later. <laughs> What's wrong, Zach? No, I just, a red hot chili vagrant just came over here and talked to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> for, for me, it's mostly like somebody is passing through town and they're they're on i-80 and they want to come say hi and like have a beer in my backyard and it's someone that i adore and they they hop in my my yard and we make eye contact and we're like (laughs) yeah right right, right. (laughs) it's so weird (laughs) yeah i don't want to hug you 
Yeah. Well, cool. I, I guess my last uh, formal question is, you know, what can we expect from the brigade uh, in the coming months in 2021? Um, well, obviously more music uh, and uh, plenty more fun stuff to watch. And a lot, a whole lot of fun, I guess, content in the works. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, uh, the details will start rolling out as we have them. Obviously, uh, logistics are twice as complicated now than they ever have been. So, but mm -hmm. we, uh, we, yeah, we'll start making announcements about stuff coming you know, to fruition. I don't know, Brian, what, what do you got? Yeah, no, same. I think this, this, year, this go around, we're going to do a lot more um, filming type things. Yeah. <laughs> we have fun doing that. And I think uh, yeah. that's developing kind of in the background all the time between Zach and I, and, and I don't know if it'll ever completely separate from the band or music, but it's definitely something that we're always going to do. And this, this is a perfect time to do that kind of stuff. So totally. Uh, and it kind of, it's weird. It kind of like informs the music in a weird sideways way, you know, a hundred percent, you know? So yeah, but shit, it's going to be, it, we're kind of also held hostage to what the world's going to allow, you know? Um, we'll, we, we'll, if we have to do some streaming, we'll do some streaming. If we get to play a show or two next year, or hopefully a lot more than that, then we'll be fucking stoked. So yep. awesome. Tell you, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you both for, for joining us today. Happy holidays. Thank you all so much. Thanks for having us. Uh, 